guys, Russ here from Wilson Landing Cattle Company. Today we're in Blairsville, Pennsylvania at Kenco Farm Fence. We're going to take a tour of their facility. Uh, I didn't realize, but they actually manufacture some things here that a lot of us didn't know that was made in the United States. And hopefully we can shed some light on that and, and maybe try and keep some of your pur purchases here in the United States versus uh, getting stuff from New Zealand or maybe even China. I'm here with Brad. He's the operations manager at Ken Cove. He's going to give us a tour of the, the facility. Hi guys, I'm Brad Ewing. I'm the operations and purchasing manager here at Ken Cove Fence. I've been here for 16 years and um, we hope to share with you guys what our company is about and what we do here and so you guys can have a deeper look at what we do. Perfect. Let's start here where all the orders come in. You know, if somebody's going to make orders, let's start. Start right walking in the door. Yep. So when we come into Ken Cove, um, we have our sales staff here and they're um, ready to take your phone calls or take care of walk-in customers as they come in. Um, they're actually um, getting ready for today's uh, event here. Event. Yeah. And I'm going to be passing passing some stuff out. Perfect. And, um, actually, most of, most of the office staff works in this building here. We have um, Ashley right over there. She's um, our marketing manager. And her office is over in the corner. We have our IT department here, our accounting department, engineering department, and our purchasing department are all wow. right here on yeah. site. How many... Uh folks do you have answering the phones and stuff looks like you have quite a few yeah so so not only do we have um, these guys answering phones but we have several people who work from their homes that also answer phones well what if we were to place an order over the internet how's that work so on the internet orders mm -hmm. um, when that order comes in it is um, processed usually um, Carrie Heath processes those orders mm -hmm. and she actually works from home Mm -hmm. And so they come into her computer and she updates them and processes them and sends them through for, for shipping. That's nice. It's it's nice because you have several folks that actually work from home, don't you? Yes, there's um, there's at least three yeah. that, that do. And, and not only that, we have a personal Idaho facility that yeah. also answers the phone. So when you call in, you get any number of those, not just mm -hmm. the ones that are here. That's, that's a thing. You have multiple branches across the United States to help with, with shipping costs, I'm assuming? We do. Yeah. We do. So this is our corporate headquarters in Blairsville. Mm -hmm. We have a distribution facility in Earl Park, Indiana, mm -hmm. one in Peculiar, Missouri, and then one in um, Caldwell, Idaho. Nice. Nice. And then we also have additional manufacturing facility in um, Nevada, Missouri, and then we have our post mail in eastern georgia oh you you guys actually even make your own fence posts yes we do that's nice and down in georgia that's southern or yellow southern yellow pine southern yellow pine territory yeah so that's probably i'm assuming that's why your your fence manufacturing or fence post manufacturing facility is down there yes yeah it helps helps with shipping there because you want to mill those logs down and get as much weight off them before you ship them out to the it customer does. yeah um, once that logs cut we leave them set and dry they dry for at least 90 days so they lose their moisture and they're ready to treat so we can get more load more posts on the loads mm -hmm. coming up mm -hmm. and that really helps with the shipping cost oh yeah it would i know some of those posts as soon as they're treated boy they're heavy aren't they they're very heavy very heavy yep. if you're you're a post <laughs> or a fence may builder using them posts every day you're going to get strong in a hurry you, you do yeah you do so well let's uh yeah we'll keep on here So as we go into here, um, this was where our Energizer Repair Department was. That's now our engineering staff. Okay. Um, we had to remove our Energizer Repair Department as we expanded the buildings mm -hmm. here. Well, you're continually growing, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you know, like for what what I do is teach rotational grazing, and I've seen that really tremendously increase in the last 10 years oh i'm sorry it's it's really taken off and yeah that's actually 
that was a focus of ours that we were been talking about this past year is trying to support the grazing industry mm -hmm. a lot more. Well, it's going to grow as you know as, as the fuel prices and the fertilizer prices increase. The farmers yes. not going to be able to put those inputs into the farm so you know this is this is awesome correct yeah, yeah absolutely i yeah. mean i was just talking back to my dad this um this past week it's mm -hmm. like what are we going to do in the springtime fertilizer costs are through the roof the spray costs are, are through the roof you're not even sure if you can get seed and if you are I think they're only guaranteeing guarantee like 30% of what you could get before. Yeah, the fertilizer costs, I was, I was looking there last night actually, they the fall fertilizer crop prices for this year have increased 100%. Yeah. So if you wait until spring, it's even going to be worse. Yeah. And, and the manufacturers don't even know if they're going to be able to get the product, get the fertilizer out to the farmers. It's so backlogged to the... Um, as I was saying earlier, when I started here, uh, the lunchroom there, it used to be the sales office, mm -hmm. and then we had the shipping department was in here, and all the ground shipping got done right, right. in this building. Wow, that's pretty neat. I just noticed this. You have some old uh, yeah. strainers. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's all kinds of old strainers there. Those, some of them are pretty cool. Yep, and then there's also some um, some supplies over here as yeah. well, some of the original. It's kind of neat how they've evolved over time. It, it has been really cool. Some, yeah. some of the neat things over here, like the, the, the wire hooks. twisters yeah. um, that, that they had. And you know we use, of course, a power drill now mm -hmm. with, with, a, with a hook on it. And then, yeah. and then some of the twisting tools, how heavy duty they were for yeah. doing the really large yeah. gauges. Yeah, that's that's pretty neat. So this this has kind of always been our assembly area here. Okay. Um, so in here we um, assemble our Titan post drivers. So. Okay. Um, Do you have like an email address? And I'm not sure how you want to. Is this a Titan fence? So th this is actually not a pounder. This is a puller. Oh. Okay. So we're just getting ready to launch these. We have put out some information on them, but they're not quite ready for market yet. Okay. But they will pull out any any T post that's in the ground, any metal post that's basically smaller than two yeah. inches. So that you're just getting ready to launch that, and that yeah, that's that's neat. Um, it's, do we, we also sell that into uh, uh, where it really looks like they're going to take off is pulling tent stakes. Yeah. Um, that seems to be a real driving force behind Oh, that. yeah. Some of the tent stakes are almost impossible once you put them through yes. pavement. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that works really good. And then, of course, do you, you have a, do you have a post pounder we can look at real quick? This is probably one of our, this is our newest model. In and then this is one of our... So you, um, these here are designed to drive mostly T-posts? Um, T-post, rebar, um, can, round rods. Can we drive uh, fiberglass yes. posts with this too? Yes, you can drive any post up They'll, to the diameter that will fit in the tube. Okay. And there's different configurations when you buy different ones of these. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it comes with a couple different sleeves and you can mm -hmm. buy additional sleeves. So you can do like one inch, two inch, three inch. Um, oh wow, you can do clear up to three inch. On, on some of the sizes you wow, can. Wow, that's nice. I couldn't imagine how strong a three inch fiberglass post would be. Yeah, it would be pretty substantial. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Yeah, those those there are neat. You know, back in my day, I had the old, uh, the old uh, piece of pipe with the two handles yes. on it. You got strong in a hurry. You did, you did. <laughs> Wow, that's that is nice. And then we we have this model. It came out, and it has an extension that goes on it as well. So, so you can actually get this up on a ten foot post, and it has handles that come down with a trigger on it for for driving. Well, that would be ideal for like the deer farmer, the high fence guy. It's got to have that high fence. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. And you got the the Honda motor on it. It's notorious for starting in one or two poles, and you know they're really lot reliable. They are. We've had really good luck with them. Yeah, the, the Honda motors are excellent. Um, as we go through here, um, we're going to come into our um, manufacturing and production area. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we make a, a whole lot of different products here. 
Um, this is a braided twine here. Um, it's, it's unlike the, the, the standard twines that, that you're used to having. This is a, this is a braid. And these actually are going to go into the back and they get used on our nets. So this is actually the top strand of our net. Okay, cool. And then it, all this here, if it's, it's working, it all just kind of braids it, it all together. It does. Yeah. yeah this is how our braided wire is made. Um, so over here, we're making our quick braces. Uh, okay. So Now, how does the quick brace work? So the quick brace works um, on your end or your corner post when you need to do your bra your bracing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times they use a figure eight wire mm -hmm. or um, put a strainer in there, a crimp sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have now gone to a cable with a gripple on there. Okay. And yeah. you kind of um, you go around the end of the post, slide right. up like a noose slide it tight yep. take it down around the other side mm. slide your grip on grip slide it through tighten it up and you're done i'll bet this would never break it it does not break <laughs> no it's, the posts are going to come out of the ground before this breaks <laughs> yeah. uh, they're really strong last a long time no, quick that, and easy to put up is that stainless steel that is not stainless. not stainless okay it's just galvanized correct okay we have tried to do a stainless but we found that the holding strength is not up to par on it because right. of the way the stainless works. Yeah, stainless steel, a lot of folks don't realize stainless steel is a lot weaker than carbon steel. Yes, it, it, is. it is. And it also rusts. Yeah. If, if, if you, there's so many different grades of stainless. If you don't yeah. have very specific types of stainless, it, it's still going to corrode. It's still going to corrode. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, so we make our um, our geared reels here. Uh, Sweet, so, I didn't. So, yeah. Yeah. So they come in and all kinds of different parts. So and they're all all. As many of the parts for putting them. Wow. Put together, and um, you know, we we build them, um, assemble them, make sure they work right, make sure they're cranking mm -hmm. out good, and uh, when when they're done. Um, well, they don't quite look like this. <laughs> Sometimes we have to set test up for the newer employees sure. so we can see what what they're supposed to, what they're not supposed right. to do. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of folks are using the three to one geared reels. They are, and they're, they're, yeah. they're a great. That's product. that's that's the that's the most popular reel, probably is the three to one geared reel. It is by far. Yeah, it is. By it far. is. Um, you know, we sell several different brands of the three to one, and, yeah. and each of them mm -hmm. far outsells the other. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, myself, I like your mini reels. Uh huh. You okay. know, I got I got sixty <laughs> or seventy of the mini reels. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So. Uh, yeah, I'm That's really cool. This, see, these here are your posts for your uh, for our nets. For your netting, yeah. Uh, so what we are we are assembling those here. Um, so they come in in different um, configurations, and we we get them done and well, there's have them put together. you know if you look at how netting the netting's put together, there is a lot of work, a lot of assembly work into putting them together. There is. There is, and we'll get to, uh, we'll get we'll to get see to that. that here. In a awesome. So that'll, be, so that'll be cool to see. Yeah. Look what they got let's, the machines running. Yeah, let's check the braiders out. out. You see the... Why? Wow. Those machines make, that's beautiful. Yeah. That is just beautiful. They, they do a really good job. Yeah. So, um, you have to have these little spindles in order to run that. So that's what we're actually making right here. So you get the big 
the big stands come in and then you wind it onto these. Okay, put them on on uh, bobbins like yes. for a sewing machine, mate, basically. Right. Yeah. Now, does this uh, have sun protection on it? It does. It's it is UV stabilized. Good. I actually have some of this wire that I'm using on my mini reels. Oh, okay. I bought that from you guys. Okay. Okay. And I didn't realize this is how it's made right here. Yep. 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 That, that's really neat. Now, this here probably gives you your footage and it has to... It, it does. It reads it as it's coming off there. And then mm -hmm. once it reaches a certain amount, it shuts off. Okay. And that's probably for your netting and sizing your nets and stuff, probably, wouldn't it? Um, well, we kind of, um, actually, we just make it a continuous um, spool. Oh, okay, um, so you can just keep going and going and going. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's basically endless. Okay. When one of these ones are empty, they'll, they'll slice, they'll tie it on. Okay. And it'll wind right in. And you never even know it. Right. Yep. Right, so like, so that one just shut down there. Yes, yeah, it's probably... That's because it lost the piece. In fact, you can see, right there, we have slack. Yeah. So you can see the bobbin's empty. Yep. So, so that they're gonna tie that on somebody's... and it'll fire back up. Nice. So this is basically an endless roll. <laughs> I mean, we'll have to stop it when it's clean full. But... Right, right. Um, over here that we're making our strainers. These are our Kiwi strainers. We okay, so, so you actually assemble these here. I thought they came from New Zealand. No, the, the, the kiwi ones are actually made made right here. That's a couple good ones. Yeah, I, I actually use these on my fence. Wow. Yeah, we make we make the regular ones and we also make the ones that have the quick end in. I've just started using those, the quick end ones. Uh-huh. And man, that thing makes makes life a lot easier. Yes. I mean you just You know this this strainer here you have to bend it over and either tie it off by hand or you have to put a, a crimp sleeve on it and this one here basically it it's put in here in a place this one here is basically the same as this this one here but you just slide the end of your wire in there and boy i'll tell you what it it really speeds things up and, and they hold good Oh, it, it holds tremendously well. We've yeah. actually full tested those here a number of times, and the the Y will give before that will ever give. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing how strong that uh, it is. That little grip grip. Yes, we do have some finished ones. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a finished one. You know, it's the same as same as the other one, except for it has that little. Yeah, it, quick, it is the only difference. Yeah. And another thing that I found with with this too, because a lot of times when you're putting, whenever you're putting the strainers on, you have a little extra slack that you got to cut out of your wire. Mm -hmm. This here, you just pull that extra slack right out, right out through here, and you just cut it off. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It makes it makes it really really easy to work with. Oh yeah, yeah. These things here, are like, like the best. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're nice. We're coming up to our net, your netting. Yeah, we um, so we have a lot of netting here pre-staged. Uh, we we don't always make the netting and put out here, but we've had been having post supply issues, being able mm -hmm. to get products in right. um, with everything that's been going on. So we don't want to shut the machines down, so we are running them without post. And then once we got our post supply in, we'll come back in and we'll re re, re rewind them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can I can see that. I think supply is is hitting a lot of manufacturing plants. It's it's been it's been it's been really bad. It yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, we make our own fence staples here. Um, this is our staple machine. Cool. And uh, we can actually open this up, and you can see the staples. Wow. There. Um, we aren't running any right now, right? Because we're out of wire. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, supply uh, supply you know supply issues yeah it's the lead times have gotten tremendously long yeah i mean we have staples to sell but we we don't have a large 
amount. Right. You know, I right. think I think we're gonna be okay mm -hmm. as long as we don't get any big runs on it. Right. But as long as things well, fortunately <laughs> for you this time of year fencing built fence buildings kind of tapering off a little bit and slowing down it has and it's helped us kind of get catch catch back, catch up. back up yes yes that's that's definitely an issue yeah i mean i would love to show you the machine run it's, it's it, pretty yeah. cool to oh, i'll bet it <laughs> is i'll bet that baby spits out staples like crazy it does it does and it has a variable speed so you can slow it down or speed it, speed it up. up oh wow yeah, it's yeah i'll bet it just just throws staples out it does it does um we wind our wire here uh this is our max 10 kiwi wire what's the tensile strength on this um, I've, I've used it it seems to be a lot harder than 180,000 psi is this like 200 this is 200,000 psi wire yeah um it's it is our most popular wire it's, okay it's what most people build their high tensile fence with what's life the lifespan on this fence uh, we expect it to last at least 30 years yeah so you know the 180,000 psi wire you know if you get 20 years out of it i think you're lucky and yeah. this wire here i have some on my fence this this wire here and it it's just as shiny you know it's probably close to 10 10 years old and it's still shiny and new as it was when i put it on that's and that's what we expect out of it yeah it's it's got an electroplated finish mm -hmm. which is unlike a lot of the other wires where, okay. where they have a hot dip galvanized finish right the um, electroplate i don't know how's that because a lot of times i think the the highest grade galvanized finish you can get is a class three yeah so this so this, it is still a class three finish it's still a class three correct but but the way that it is um put on there it is basically adhered to the wire okay and so like a hot galvanized you can chip it off mm -hmm. and this you you're not going to chip it off right right that's one thing that i've noticed we're working with it i mean it's 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 a whole different animal compared to the old wire it is yeah it is and then you know if you're sliding on insulators or using crimp sleeves you don't have to worry about hitting those gloves and you're mm -hmm. you know, when you're running your your insulators down yeah even when you're putting your sleeves in it's a very consistent thing oh yeah yeah it, it's nice and and you really wouldn't think of it you have like six strands up this is shiny yeah and as human beings we like shiny things yeah. so it looks better it does it does it, it looks it looks really good um come off the machines going out i know mm -hmm. the guy that winds the wire he's always excited when, when he's running this yeah he, it even runs easier on his equipment yeah yeah so you know yeah that's in the process of winding you know we do a thread leg coil mm -hmm. um which which is really helpful when you're stringing up wire um you know makes it lay real nice and smooth and you're not having to fight a lot of things yeah yeah that's high tensile can get a little bit you got to get used to it you do you do you know, it, it's a whole different animal compared to that old soft wire that you know i grew up as a kid you know the barbed wire and uh, the what is it what they call it silver or something or another oh yes um silver rod silver rod yeah that stuff was soft and it broke easy and it does this stuff here i've seen cows and i've seen white-tailed deer bounce off of this stuff yeah um we've actually at my farm we've sent a couple round bells down through it by yeah. mistake yeah and sometimes it catches it and sometimes it just kind of lets the bell go through and pops back up yep yep uh, you know it had trees down on it you cut the tree off it stands back up you may have to replace an insulator or two but right you're good to go you're ready to go yeah yeah it doesn't break no, <laughs> no <laughs> whatever no, hits no. it's gonna break before it does yeah yep um so this is a brand new net machine um that we're just getting ready to to get it um running nets because we, we can't keep up with production okay so this machine runs um 50 to 100 percent faster than our current machine oh wow nice um, so you can really pump the old netting out and there's yeah. how many different styles of netting you guys do because i mean you have you have netting from poultry clear up to uh cattle yeah um you know we have i think we have 30 variations right now yeah that's and that's awesome. that's a lot it is that's a it lot it's, it's a lot to keep up with and but you know that there to me looks like maybe goat fence 
that's actually poultry. Poultry, okay. Yeah. So that's going to be our, our 1448 tree. Okay. Um, poultry net. Okay. And, you know, of course, that net will work for anything. Right. That, that is our most versatile net. It is our best seller. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I were buying netting, that's what I would probably buy because, you know, I have sheep and goats and if I want to put my pigs in there or whatever, yeah. you know, I'm good to go. Absolutely. And, you know, it's got the smaller square, so you're less likely to get the goats. Yeah. The goats' heads caught in there because that's, that's, a, that's a problem with goats, especially if you have electric in there. They get their heads stuck and then, you know, unfortunately, you come come to a dead dead goat or you know one that's very injured yeah and that's why that is the most popular nothing really can fit in there yeah um, yeah you know the other nets they have their place they oh sure absolutely views. you know and some this is probably one of your more expensive nets because you have the small and there's a lot more work is involved in making it because I think, don't you make netting with like six inch squares in it? You, we do. Yeah. We do. So this this netting takes the longest to run. Sure, absolutely. It, 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 it takes twice as long to run as the other one. Right. So there is, it is our most expensive net. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's versatile. You can use it for everything. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. Uh, so here you can see the full. That's, that's the okay, yeah. Running out there. Yeah, these, these were the... This here was the braid that we seen working earlier. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the top line on the net. That's... Um, okay, and I see you have a different type of wire here. Yeah, so that is your standard um, twine. Yeah, it's just... So basically... Yeah, it's twine. It's twine where this here is braided. Right. That's braided wire, and then this here is twine. And they're both very well. They're, you know, they're both very good. They, they are. And they're UV stabilized, so we don't need to worry about the sunlight, because for me, that seems to be the biggest problem with a lot of the rotational grazing stuff, is sunlight just eats it. It, it is. It is. You know, we, when, when I source these products and get them, you know, I try to get the longest UV package on as you mm -hmm. can. Right. There, there is a limit. The UV that you can get on a product. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, but sunlight. I think sunlight's harder on stuff than the uh, rain is. It really is. Yeah, it sunlight. really is. You know, people talk about the elements. The biggest element is the sun. Sun. Yep. Yep. And of course, we want sunshine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what makes our grass grow. Right. Right. So this is the six inch space, uh, actually seven inch space nest that we okay. were talking about. That's cool, it just come out of the, out of the machine. It looks like that machine's got some use on it. It does, it does. <laughs> I wonder how many hundreds of thousands of miles it's made. A lot. So yeah. we, we got these machines in 2008. Uh-huh. Uh, we we um, incorporated the company was doing it into ours. Mm -hmm. And that's when we set these up and started using them. Okay. Uh, full, full time. Yeah. Um, I, at that time, I was the operations and production manager. Okay. That's, that's really cool. And I see you have another variation running over there. We do. So that is the same as what we just saw in the first machine. Okay. It's just a different color. Okay. Uh, so again, that's our um, our 48 inch uh, poultry net. So this will be our second best selling net. Now, it's just a different color. Is there a reason that you're doing different colors? Is one better for different livestock? or? Uh, there is, you know, I've heard a lot about that some livestock can see colors better than others. It's a positive net because the is positive net. Okay, yeah, okay, I forgot about that, yeah. So this one here is all hot, right? Yeah, yeah. So so, the first one we've seen over there, it was all hot as well. Okay, okay, so, and, and then you make one that's a positive negative. Correct, correct. So it'll yeah. have, it'll okay. have the, the orange wires and the green wires. Okay, in. yeah, and let's, you have some laying right over yeah. here. And these here, they actually have two leads that come off. Yeah, there's, there's a lead up here. Yep. This here would be your negative. 
and then you connect this to a ground rod and then this one here we connect to our fencer. Right. But you can actually, even in, in really dry conditions, you can hook this to the positive terminal and this to the negative terminal. Oh, okay. And it acts a little bit differently, but if the animal touches both of these, it's a direct ground and it will get shot. Um, you know, that's that's great. I, I never knew that. And um, especially if you're in a dry area, area like uh, Texas. Texas has got a lot of goats. Uh, yeah. Kansas, different areas like that, mm -hmm. where where conditions are dry. Dry. I mean, I never thought of that. Hooking one to one to the positive and one to the negative on your fencer, and your fencer would be golden. It'd be good to go. Yeah, yeah. You you're guaranteed to shock anything. And Any, if you have yep. animals that are climbing, uh, it also keeps them off of it. Yeah. Because you know, on an all electric, if a squirrel is on there, it's not getting shot. Yeah, and that's true. If it's true. on here, it's going to get shocked if it climbs from one to the other. I never thought of that, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, and, and I think raccoons are probably one of those animals that, that really this helps deter. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have this around my garden. Mm -hmm. I have this around my garden, and I have, I have this actually grounded. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm going to go with a solar charger. Okay. And go with the positive negative, like you say. Yeah, it works. It works really well. I yeah, mean, you can still hook it to the ground rod, and some people say hook it to the ground rod and to the negative mm -hmm. terminal. But if all you can do is positive negative terminal, it still works. Yeah, that you know that that's great advice. That really mm -hmm. is. Because you know a fencer doesn't work when it gets dry out. No, I no. mean you can have a hundred ground rods, and if it's dry, you're, it's not going to work. Correct. Correct. Uh, so that it, it, it works really well for that. Um, this is um, our strut for our net. So we we have a strut that that, that makes the net stand up, okay. and uh, so we're processing it right here and milling it so that it fits into the machine properly. Okay. All right. So you're making tighter tolerances, I guess. Yeah. So it actually makes it it's square. square. Yep. That's square. It's actually kind of warm coming out of the machine, it yeah. Is. We we put a, a treatment on it so that it maintains its shape and uh -huh. and its um, length. So. Okay. So that's this part right here. Correct. Right. That's this part right here on the net. And boy, that that's a lot uh, stiffer than what it is when it's coming out of the machine. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, when it's... We'll let it cure and then and then we we'll use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, this is part one of the Kenko series that we're gonna have. Uh, we just got done with the manufacturing process, and Brad's gonna take us over to the warehouse now, right? Yes. Okay, so look out for part two, and uh, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, and hit that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.